Today we're going to be talking about something potentially controversial, the use of the word queer and whether it's offensive or not. Now if you've watched any of my videos you probably know that I use the word queer to identify myself but also to use as an umbrella term for the community that's otherwise known as the LGBT community, LGBTQ community, quiltbag community, we got a lot of names. So what we're going to do in the video today is go through the history of the term and also look at why I and other people use it now. So historically the word queer actually had a, a lot of different definitions that kind of meant different things, especially when they were attached to other nouns that would change the definition as well but essentially it ranged anything from drunk, giddy, out of sorts, strange, um, to even the opposite of straight, not heterosexual straight, just like literally straight, so wavy, curly, things like that, originating from the word twerk. Incidentally, yeah, that's the thing that I found out doing research for this video. This is also where we get the classic northern phrase, there's nought so queer as folk, meaning there's nothing as strange as people. Then we get to the 1800s in the UK and then we travel over and in the 1900s in the US, this becomes a slur or derogatory term for gay people or just generally people who weren't straight and cisgender. It's this abusive meaning in its subsequent use which makes it such a controversial term. However, in the 1980s and into the 1990s, to today, there has been a reclaiming of this word by the queer community. This reclaiming of the phrase by activists and scholars, famously by Queer Nation, um, is actually something that was meant to be political, ambiguous, and explicitly intersectional. What is reclaiming, you might ask? So reclaiming is a thing that happens in a lot of marginalized communities. It's essentially taking something that has negative power against you and using it yourself so it loses some of that power. Um, we've seen this in a lot of different identities that have reclaimed words in particular, which have been used against them. We also have actually seen it elsewhere in the LGBT or queer community with the use of the pink triangle. You will see often now an upside down pink triangle with safe space written in it to denote the idea that this building or this place is a safe space for queer people. However, the history of the pink triangle, as many of you probably know, is within the persecution of gay men in Nazi Germany. Today, the use of the word queer is kind of in a weird middle stage. Yes, there are some people who still use it as a slur, but we also have use of it in very mainstream ways. We have shows like Queer Eye for the Straight Guy and Queer as Folk using it on national television, for example. It's also widely used in academia today. The idea of queer studies or queer theory is something that most people will cover if they're studying humanities subjects or even social sciences, for example. This was actually a term that was coined in 1990 by a woman called Teresa de Laurentiis at a conference. She talked about ideas around rejecting heteronormativity, breaking down binary, the relationship between uh, race and sexuality as all being things that were important as I said before, the word queer and intersectionality really have gone hand in hand since it was reclaimed. It's also used today as a personal identity. It's how I use it, for example. Um, reasons why people might identify as queer would be maybe they have more than one identity on that spectrum and it's a nice catch-all term for them. Maybe they're not sure about their identity and are trying to figure it out and it's a nice placeholder for now. Maybe their identity is very fluid and it's something that fits with them in that way. There's a ton of different reasons. And finally, it's often used now as an umbrella term for the community. And again, this is pretty mainstream. A lot of events use it, organize organizations, youth groups, things like that. So it's actually this last use, the use of it as an umbrella term, which causes the most controversy. Um, a lot of people think that because it's something that has been, and in some cases still is, used as a slur, it's not something that they want to use to identify the entire community with. My thoughts on this are essentially complicated. I obviously use it. I genuinely don't think that there is uh, an alternative name for the community which is going to satisfy everyone and I'm going to talk about that now. So I was a student activist, I was campaigns officer for my LGBT association and then I was president of the LGBT association at my university. I've seen a lot of iterations of these names, this conversation isn't new. So when I arrived it was LGBT, then it was LGBT star because there were a lot of trans people who felt at the time the T was transgender and there were a lot of people who felt like they that was only referring to people who were um, transitioning on a binary and so they wanted the star there to essentially act as a sort of this in itself is an umbrella term within this acronym that has now fallen out of favor then letters were added so q got added i was added a was added p was added then that was seen as too cumbersome so even within the acronym stuff there has been a lot of different uh, paths that we've gone down and then found fault with and then come back. 
And these things were discussed very seriously. So people would change their logos, their merchandise and stash and stuff like that um, to try and be more inclusive. But every time there was a reason why it wasn't inclusive enough. For me, queer is a term which has inclusivity in that it doesn't single out single identities and therefore doesn't leave out any single identities. Now, I totally understand there are a lot of people who are uncomfortable with the use of the word queer to personally identify themselves because it has a history of abuse and of being a slur with them personally. But then a lot of people use that to argue that we shouldn't use it as an umbrella term at all. I would say to that that I, and a lot of people that I know, especially of my age, never really heard the term queer as a negative term to do with gay people at all. What I did hear was the word gay being used and the word lesbian being used as slurs specifically to do with gay people, but also just things being described as gay to mean that they were rubbish or broken or awful. And that was my history with homophobic slurs. Here's the truth of it. Every identity that we have found for ourselves has been used as an insult against us. Ultimately, no word that we have used or will use to describe ourselves will be free of baggage. I really don't think that in the foreseeable future, we're going to have a word or a term that the entire community is going to be happy, comfortable using. I think personally, everyone should use their own umbrella term that they feel most comfortable with and to respect people's individual identities when you're referring to them individually. Personally, from my point of view, the word queer is inclusive, it's intersectional, it has a really interesting history in places that I feel comfortable in academia, in activism. But you know, we aren't a monolith. We aren't all the same. We don't all feel the same, think the same. We, we don't have the same relationship with our identities, our sexualities, our genders as other people. And that's totally okay. So I will end with the immortal words of the classic pride parade chant. We're here, we're queer, we're fabulous. Don't fuck with us. So I hope you enjoyed that. Leave any of your thoughts as usual in the comments and I will go and check them out. I'm gonna leave a little video here about the LGBT community that I've made before. Um, if you want to support me making these videos, I will leave a link to my Patreon below as well as all of my other social media so you can find me online. Until I see you next time, bye.